one class we're going to focus on, um, probably at the end of class today, certainly next Tuesday, is the capital S string class. Okay? Strings are just classes in Java, kind of. Um, so they're just like a class, like turtle or world. Strings aren't built into um, the Java language, but they do have some special behaviors, um, which we'll talk about early next week. Um, but they're still just a class. So we're, they're still in, when we make a new string, we're still making a string object. So all the stuff we've been learning about turtles apply to strings. It's just that strings have some special behaviors. So that's what we're going to explore today. Um, so feel free to update this with your name and today's date if you like. I do that just because I guess it's a habit. I mean, GitHub kind of tells me it anyway. But um, So we're going to declare some new strings together um, and call a method on it. And then I just want to have you observe the output um, for something important to take into your pair programming activity. We're going to use, so what I would like you to look for here is we're going to create a new string. And as I type this, and as you type this, I want you to compare it to the syntax we use to create a new turtle object. Because it's exactly the same. So I want you to see this like consistency between this. So I'm going to declare a new variable, but of type string, not of type turtle. I'm going to call it river. And I'm going to assign it the value returned by the new operator for making a new string. When I make a new string, I need to specify what I want the actual sequence of characters to be. I want it to be Mississippi, because I like spelling it. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 cool. The syntax of this statement is just like the turtle one. Right? We still have class name variable name that's going to reference our object equals new class name parentheses and the argument we need. Okay, strings don't live in worlds. Strings have a sequence of characters. So we have a different, different argument. Another thing that we'll dive into more later, but we're just going to kind of use for a while here, is the statement of the following. System.out.println river. In Java, this is how we print stuff to the terminal. We've seen the terminal when we've generated Java exceptions. We can also just log messages to the terminal. Okay? So this is going to print out the string object referenced by the variable river. The whole system.out.println thing we will explore more later. But I just want to point out that we can use our syntax clues to start to figure out this puzzle. We know that println must be a method because it's followed by these parentheses. We know that system must be a class because it starts with a capital letter S. We're just not so sure about this whole dot out thing. We don't quite know what that is. And it's not a method because there's no parentheses after the out, right? So we'll have to decipher this later. But we can already, just based on the syntax, start to piece together the puzzle. Let's call a method on our string object. River.replace, parenthesis, let's replace the i's with x's. And then let's print it again. You can click the compile button in the upper left corner, or you can hit control K on Windows or command K on the Mac to compile it. It should compile just fine. If we switch back to our BlueJ project window and right click on String Explorer, we can run this main method. We don't need any additional arguments, and it will print to the terminal exactly what we told it to. Mississippi, Mississippi. Anyone surprised by our output? Yeah, of course. What, what did you expect instead? I was expecting the i's to be replaced with x's. Yeah, of course we expected the i's to be replaced with the x's because that's what we said here, right? Um, let's 
do something crazy and read the documentation for the string class. So I'm just Googling for Java doc string. I like platform SE7. I'm going to search for the replace method. And so here's the documentation for replace. Um, a char sequence is really just a string, so don't let that throw you. Um, so replaces each substring of this string that matches the literal target sequence with a specified literal replacement sequence. A little bit hard to parse, but that sounds reasonable so far. The replacement proceeds from the beginning of the string to the end. For example, replacing AA with B in the string AAA will be BA rather than AB. Okay, cool. Um, parameters, the target, the replacement, returns the resulting string. Ah, that is the key thing that I didn't understand. Okay? Reading through the documentation makes it clear that this replace method doesn't change the string object on which I call replace. Instead, it returns a new string where the replacement has occurred. This is why the documentation is, is helpful. Um, but this is also something that's really important to understand when it comes to strings. So let's capture this because this is so common and will trip us up so much. It's worth a, um, a comment in our notes. So the replace method returns a reference to a new string object. It does not change the string object on which it is invoked. If you're like, well, why not? Like, it would be nice if it did. Um, in fact, there are no methods that we can call on a string object that will change that string object. So the string class has no mutator methods. Remember from yesterday that mutator methods are methods that change the state of an object. There are no mutator methods on the string class. There is no way to change an existing string object. No mutator methods. It is not possible to change, oops, to change a string object. We use a special term for this. We say strings are immutable. So if something is immutable, like mutator, like mutate, it means it can be changed. If something is immutable, that means it's not possible to change it. It cannot be changed. Yeah. So we say strings are immutable. A reasonable question is, why? <laughs> why did Java do this? Um, and honestly, it's really for performance reasons. By designing the string class such that a string object can never change, Java can take some internal optimizations, um, and strings are so commonly used, that ends up saving um, a lot of the computer's memory and other type of efficient processing. So it's really a performance reason why strings can't be changed. And once we get used to it, it's not that big a deal. Because for example, if we want to replace the i's with x's, we just have to assign it to a variable. So I can declare a new variable, string, let's call it river x, and I can call river.replace, and I can say replace the i's with x's. The replace method, which we now know from reading the documentation, returns a reference to a new string where the i's have been replaced by x's, and we're assigning that reference to the river x variable. And now if I print that, oops, system.out.println river x, when you run this, you'll now see that the third thing that is printed, the, the, the string referenced by river x, does in fact have the i's replaced by x's. So the lesson here that I wanted us all to do together before we start doing pair programming stuff is just remember, we can never change a string. So we better always assign what's returned to a variable um, so that we don't lose it.
any questions at this point? Yes. So in and of itself, the river Dagger 